All right. Good morning. Good morning. I said good morning. Look, I was, um, I was laughing. Y'all know I, I cut up a little bit with, uh, with Jeannie on Thursday night, and uh, we've got some missionaries that are in, and they've got their little pop-up camper at my house. And so uh, Brother Larry was just telling me, he says, you know, Thursday night, he says, you cut up with your wife, and I can tell it didn't really work out that good for you. I said, oh, really? Well, why do you say that? He says, well, I saw your little doghouse out in front of you. Are y'all? <laughs> I saw your doghouse out in front of your house. What? <laughs> Let me tell you something. There ain't never been no doghouse at my house, are y'all? <laughs> and I, I, I just pray over my dogs, too. They ain't even got a doghouse. I just pray over them and let them in on the carport. Let's ask God's blessing upon our service. I'm so glad to see all of you guys here. Good morning. Good morning. All of you guys joining us all across the world, we're so glad to have you. We've got some special guests today, a great service planned for you, so I'm glad you're here. Let's ask God's blessing. Lord, we're grateful. How many of you are grateful today, church? <laughs> Say with me. Say, Lord, we're so grateful. We're so thankful for everything that you do. In our lives, we acknowledge you as our God. We worship you and praise you with all of our heart. Come on, put your hands together. Give God glory. Come on, Pastor Chris. Here we go.
shout this morning. He is worthy. He is so worthy. Hey, we got baptism today, and so we're so excited to celebrate baptism. If you're being water baptized, I need you to get out of your seat and line up for the baptismal. Pastor Eric, if you can go ahead, you and Brother Ricky, y'all can go ahead and start. Um, I tell you, we've got um, another uh, a missionary couple that that's going to come in and administer to us so um let's go ahead and get our baptism people over right now you may be seated too you may be seated if you can good um pastor eric are you ready over there your mic hot i think so yes it's hot okay all right praise the lord um so let's go ahead and get um our baptism people where are they all right. Oh, they ran to the bathroom to get dressed, huh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know this is a little different today, but all right, it's good. So, um, Pastor Chris, just keep leading us till it's time to start water baptizing. Y'all just relax. You hold my every moment You calm my rage and seas You walk with me through fire You heal all my disease And I trust Hallelujah. We got Brother Lynn here being baptized today. Lynn, have you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? I have. You sure? I'm positive. Well, upon profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and in the sweet name of Jesus. Okay. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. like the church to stretch forth your hands to this young man. I spent some time with him this morning and we went through the plan of salvation. He's ready. But we were just talking and he was talking about you know, who would pay for his sins? Should he try to pay for them himself? And I told him no, Jesus paid it all. So he accepted Jesus again in the room as we were getting ready. So Brother Irwin, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Upon your profession of faith, 
we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the sweet name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey guys, isn't this great? Yeah. Isn't this wonderful? Thank you. Awesome. We celebrate all of you guys. Your commitment to Jesus. <laughs> Sweetheart, what's your name? Partissa. Partissa. Okay. Partissa, we're so glad to have you this morning. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and in the, in the Holy Ghost in the sweet name of Jesus. <laughs> got one that got by on us. Jesus, send your grace and mercy to her. She didn't want to get her Amen. hair wet. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Look, Jesus received her baptism. Believe Amen. me, he received her. Well, and young you man, who are you? Cross, you I'm Dylan. Hi, Dylan. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I sure do. You sure do? Well, upon profession of your faith, Dylan, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in the sweet name of Jesus. Amen. Full dunk. <laughs> Come on, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. Yes, you have. Okay. Upon profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the sweet name of Jesus. <laughs> right okay Chris have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior sir yes I have yes. Well, praise the Lord upon profession of your faith we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in the sweet name of Jesus amen Stop that sissy stuff, boy. <laughs> boy, you better man up. You're in front of it, boy. <laughs> Jesus. DeAndre. Pastor Philip, you got work to do still yet. Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Okay, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost in the sweet name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Sister, tell us who you are. My name's Taryn. Taryn, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? 
Okay, upon profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brother, tell us who you are. My name is Zachary Vince. Zachary, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Well, praise the Lord. Upon profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost in the sweet name of Jesus. Now tell us your name. Cherish. Hey, praise the Lord. Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Upon profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit in the sweet name of Jesus. <laughs> Did y'all see him fight in that water? <laughs> Where, where's that guy at? Let's get him in here. Let him see a real woman be baptized. <laughs> Hello, Tara. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Absolutely. So since you have, on profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, in the sweet name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> be back there with Portissa. I'm going to be honest with y'all. You think about it. In all my years of seeing people get baptized, I've never seen anybody avoid just going all the way under, just their face. Have y'all? I mean, that baby was not having it. She was... <laughs> and then the little boy at the end, I saw Pastor Eric had to put his head on. <laughs> we are not abusers of children in this house. You hear what I'm saying? We're just trying to help the process. Amen. <laughs> that was awesome. What a powerful, powerful baptismal morning. Amen? Amen. Man, I'm loving me some Jesus. That's so exciting. So exciting. Father, we pray that you would be with these precious people with the confession of faith that they have made this morning. We pray, Father God, that you would honor their, their uh, identification that they have made with you this morning and going down into a liquid death and rising up to newness of life. Father God, may their lives never be the same again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing this morning? All right. All right. I heard y'all heard about Ricky's little doghouse event, huh? <laughs> he popped me upside my head Thursday night. I thought this brother lost his mind. Then he come back and did it a second time. I said, should I punch him in the throat in front of all these people or not? And I debated and I decided not to. I thought, we liable to lose half the church. I nail him in front of everybody. I was thinking about doing this morning in front of everybody. That way, what, you got something to say? He's all anting up here like he... Keep on, that's one. <laughs> 
Do we have any visitors in the house this morning? If you would just raise your hand high and keep it up for me. Wow. Where are you from? Arizona? Arizona. Get out, man. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming this awesome. morning. Keep your hand up for a sec. Yes, ma'am. Baltimore. Pastor Penny Fisher from Baltimore, Maryland. We are honored to have you in the house this yes. morning. Bless you. I'm just from Zachary. I'm not from Maryland. I'm not from Arizona. I'm just from Zachary. Awesome. We accept Zachary people, so you're in, you're in luck today. Yes. Baton Rouge. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, sir. Awesome. Okay, Interfaith. Awesome. That, that's our partnership with Prison Ministry. We partner with Brother Russell Roseberry, and uh, Bishop Ricky goes into um, the men's prison and the women, and he goes and speaks a word. Amen? I mean, you can't tell him anything. He's already been there, so you can't look crazy. Amen? He's a great one to bring. Yes. Busy Corner. You best know something about Busy Corner, man. All right. All right. I see you, Chase. Brought him in from Gloucester, huh? We important people from all over the place. Amen. Yes. Did I see another one back here? No? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Baton Rouge. Awesome. All right. Am I missing anyone else? Are we good? You're from what? That's my dad. You need to stop. <laughs> I'm from Venus now. <laughs> Crazy thing. All right, all right. Well, let's give our visitors a hand clap. Amen. At the end of the service, to my right is our welcome center. We'd love to have you come in for a few minutes, even you from Mars. <laughs> you can have a, a cold drink and a snack right quick and meet with Brother Ricky and uh, get to know him a little bit better. We'll get to know you a little bit better. We're not going to keep you long. So if you want to do that, you're welcome. Also, on your, your visitor card, there's a place for an email address. We're not going to bomb you, but we do send out periodic things about what are going on around here, what are going on around, you know, you uh, help me, Jesus. Also, we sent out a daily devotion that you might enjoy getting. Plus, there's a place on the back form of it to put your uh, prayer request if you have any. We have intercessors that meet up here throughout the week. And they seriously, they take your card and they pray over your need. Amen? Because we're a house of prayer. We believe that God is real and that he does answer prayer. Amen? We don't just dress up and come here on Sunday to hear three points and a prayer and go home. Amen? We really believe what we're doing. Amen? Oh, man, are y'all with me this morning? Yeah. All right, all right. Well, look, what we're going to do is we're going to take a short commercial break, and I'll be right back.
right, let me hear from the men in this place. Hi, church. Just a reminder that small groups kicked off last Sunday. So what I'm encouraging you to do is to pick up one of our new brochures, flip through it, and see what interests you. We have many Bible studies and special interest groups. To name a few of them that have just started, Sunday School Class, Heals Helping Heal, Fit for Jesus, Fusion Friday, Young Adults, Sign Language Class, Senior Citizen Potluck, just to name a few. Me and my wife are also offering a small group. We're doing Miracle Path 1, 2, and 3 at our home in a more of a comfortable setting, kind of get out of church and learn more about Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, pick up one of the brochures, flip through it, and get involved. Stay connected by visiting miracleplacechurch.org. At this time, we exit to silence all cell phones, bring your children to age-appropriate locations, and prepare your heart for Bishop's message. All right, all right. I just want to take a brief second and remind you all, if you haven't gotten an Andrew card, we gave them out a couple of weeks ago that you can put three of your friends' names on. You can pray them. You can fill out two and send one up front if you want, and we'll pray with you. And these are the ones that we're really focusing on praying over uh, because our friend day, March 22nd, is coming up quick, and we want to invite these people that we have prayed for. Amen? Amen. We're sowing, we're sowing the seed of prayer in their life and believing God for a harvest of salvation for them. So if you have a friend that's unsaved or somebody that you know is struggling, maybe they've been in Christ before, but they have just kind of backslidden or they're just got overwhelmed by the things of the world, remember to put them down and pray for them, and God will touch their hearts. And we're believing that as he gets them in the house that he'll be able to really speak to them. Amen? So if you need an Andrew card, give us a holler. Also, our Spring Family Fest is coming up quick. Easter, everybody say Easter. Easter. Yeah, okay, this is the Saturday prior to Easter, and what we're doing is if anybody in the house wants to sign up, if you have, if you want to do face painting, if you want to do a game, if you want to watch a, an inflatable for little children coming and going, if you want to help with the eggs or anything of that nature, if you would just like to get involved and have a good time, it's only about two hours out of that day that we're going to be getting together. Pastor Anthony will have somebody in the lobby after service today to sign you up. It's really a good time, and you don't have to sit there the whole time. You can say, I'll do 30 minutes at the face painting or whatever and then that gives you an opportunity to wander around invite people invite people invite people because when we say free giveaways we're not talking about um an egg and a piece of candy we're talking about usually get a bike or a tv or something groovy like that all right all right, all right. praise the lord um also, I see Pop back there. I'm so sorry. Last time, I, I uh, when I did the marriage thing on Ricky and I's anniversary, I, I jumped too quick with Pastor Danny. Actually, uh, Pop has been married for 51 years. He beat him by he beat him by a year. So we congratulate you and your wife, and uh, we love you very much. All right, let's see what our tithe scripture is today. Romans 8:32. He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If you brought your tithes and offerings this morning, you can hold your envelope up. Father, we come to you and we thank you that you are a gracious and generous God. You have not spared anything. You gave your only son that we might be saved and welcomed into your kingdom, that our sins might be paid for because we couldn't pay the debt ourselves. And so, Lord, we owe you everything that we are and everything that we have is yours. And so, Lord, we ask you right now to cause us to be a generous people, that we our hearts might be toward you and that we would trust you in all things. And, Father, you said that you have freely given us all things. I pray for my precious friends in here this morning who are sowing into your kingdom and those who aren't even able this morning. I, I pray for them as well. Lord, I'm asking you, Father God, that you would give us the things that we need, our health to be restored, our, our uh, vision for our life, Lord God, that we might have passion again. Lord, I pray for our finances. I pray for wholeness in, in, in all of our spirit, soul, and body. Father, we're giving you all the glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Bless your people, Lord. We honor you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on from all over this place and so into the kingdom of God.
guys. I always like to come and just greet you. Um, I understand Ed's from Delaware watching us right now. Great big shout out to you, Ed. And also, Eric, I hear you're at work watching us today and you, you're laughing about that pop-up tent uh, camper thing. Doghouse. I ain't staying in no doghouse. I always sleep with my woman every night in bed. And if she's mad, she's got to get glad. We love all of you. We speak God's favor and God's blessing. We've got some missionaries here today. They're going to minister to us in song and word. I believe that they're anointed. I believe that it's going to be a great, great impartation. So don't go away. We love all of you guys all the way to Delaware. We bless you in the name of Jesus. God, thank you for all of our precious people that are with us from all over the world, even Pakistan. We bless you guys in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Get ready for a great, great anointed to come into your life. Come on, give the Lord another great big shout. All right, now Chris Sims, where's Chris? He's sick. Oh, my, and you're his better half. Yeah, right. Okay, so you're going to fill in for him. Yes. All right, take a couple of minutes to do that. Thank you so much. I see people here, beautiful faces that all love Jesus. Yes. That's something we got in common. The Lord wants us to visit those in prison. That's why I'm here today. Interfaith Prison Ministry goes to the different prisons across the state, and coming up, April 10th through 12th is the Hunt Crusade for Men. So we need men to volunteer to come in and participate. There's three reasons why you would want to go in, okay? It's the cheapest, easiest mission trip you'll ever take. Amen. It's right there in St. Gabriel. So you can go and come back. You don't have to have a hotel. You can go Friday night and Saturday, coming, coming back and forth, stay at your own house. What we need to do is encourage the men of God that are incarcerated, the ones that are serving, and that's their mission field 24-7. They can't escape from it. We need to encourage them. We need to lift them up, let them know that they are, uh, we are praying for them on the outside, from the outside. Amen. We need to encourage those that are there that don't know Jesus. We need to tell them that they're loved no matter what. We need to let them know that there's hope. And the third thing is you need to go. But if you've never experienced prison ministry, you need to go and experience at least once because it will change your life. You will get ministered to probably more than you're offering ministry. And I'm speaking from experience here. We need women too. And um, Pastor Rick, he's going to put the link to interfaithpm.org on his website, on the Miracle Place website. You can see the schedule. We need women to go into the women's prisons. We will train you. We will get you cleared. We will give you everything that you need to get in and be in God's service. And I hope that you will choose to do this. Follow your heart. These people need to know that they are loved. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Awesome. Come here. Good job. Hey, did she do a great job or what? Awesome, awesome. All right, guys, I know y'all been saying, man, that guy is blazing through. But um, I just want to make sure we get everything that we need to get in this service. Are y'all alive out there? All right, I've got some great, great new friends that I've just really met. I met them through Interfaith Prison Ministry as well. And also Pastor Jeff referred them to us. And uh, this is Brother Travis, Brother Travis and his precious wife, Allegra. And they're going to come minister to us in let me just say this before I turn it over. You ready? Okay. <laughs> Got to make sure you're ready. We don't want no hiccups in the service. You know, when you shift your car, you want to make sure you don't double clutch, babe. I hate that kind of, you know, same way in the church. All right, so <laughs> these guys, I believe, have an impartation for us. And, and, you know, if I put them on our stage on Sunday morning... I better feel like you can deliver, because if you can't deliver, you can't be here on Sunday, all right? So uh, they're going to really, let's just pray. Stretch forth your hands right now. God, we're just so grateful for all the gifts of the body of Christ. We're grateful for your anointing, God, and that you appoint 
people with different gifts. And we pray, Lord, that you'll stir up all the gifts in, in Travis and Allegra, Lord, and that you would use them mightily in this service today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. If you're in agreement, say amen. amen. Come on, Brother Travis. All right, praise God. We serve an awesome God, don't we? Amen. So I am just honored and privileged to join your church. And I just want to continue the atmosphere of praise this morning. And so I'm going to worship him. My wife, Allegra, is going to come up in just a few minutes. Uh, but this first song I'm going to shout, uh, start out with is, Oh, happy day, you wash my sins away. So if you stand up, uh, I'm going to use a loop pedal. So I'm going to kind of do the one-man band thing here. And let's just praise God. Okay. Okay, 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 give me just a second. Don't clap clap right right off the bat. I am 
Praise God. <laughs> I, oh, thank you for giving my wife a hand. By the way, give a hand for my wife, Allegra. Join in. And we're going to just continue to praise God. And again, I'm sorry to have you stop clapping earlier. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to do the same kind of thing on this next song. How many of y'all have a lot of reasons to praise God? Anybody? Amen. All right. This next song is Bless the Lord, O oh My Soul, 10,000 Reasons, if you know that. And so on this song, um, what I'm doing is I'm going to tap on my guitar a little bit. I'm going to record that, make some drum sounds with my mouth, record that. I'm going to play it back with me and then uh, sing and harmonize and play it all back. So it's going to be kind of fun. So we're going to build a real big band sound with just the two of us. Oh, three of us. This is our little girl, Saber. Say hi, Saber. <laughs> so let's praise Jesus. Y'all ready? All right. And on that 
Father God, we just love you, and I pray that you take over today, God. It is all about you. And God, I pray as we continue to worship you, we just get lost in your presence, God, and we press in to go deeper with you, God. We just adore you, and we give you the praise. Without borders, help me walk upon 
get stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Help me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. Then my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Help me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. going to, if y'all have a seat, uh, man, we serve an awesome God, don't we? Yes, we do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our little baby girl fell asleep on that. That's awesome. So. <laughs> hey, well, just to kind of introduce ourselves to y'all formally, and again, I just want to thank you so much, Pastor Ricky, for letting us come yes. and just share what God's Amen. doing, because he gets all the glory. Amen. Amen. It's all about Amen. Jesus. But just to kind of share our story with you, um, it was about six years ago that my wife Allegra and I felt God's spirit just burdening us that we were supposed to do something. How many of you know that when you accept Jesus as your Lord, that it doesn't stop there, that he sends his Holy Spirit to guide your life? Anybody know that? Man, I don't know how people can survive without that moving within them. And so we just felt this burdening from God. And so we started praying and fasting and seeking God with all we had. And what we heard God tell us at the end of that time of, of fasting was simply that we needed to stop wasting time. I don't know about you guys, but I believe we're in the last days right now. And I believe we need to live like we're in the last days. And so when we got that word from the Lord, we took it very literally. And in June of 2009, my wife stepped aside from her job as a fifth grade school teacher at a public school. Um, I stepped aside from my job as an administrator at a Christian school. And we just went out on the road and we started sharing Jesus with everybody we could. <laughs> And I mean, that's just been our whole life. We've hooked up with Interfaith Prison Ministry, praise God, and I've uh, been able to go into so many units here in Louisiana and in Texas and Pennsylvania, and now we're going into Ohio and Washington State. And uh, we just, and honestly, that's it. We've just been sharing Jesus in prisons, rehabs, street corners, churches, anywhere we have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I'm sharing this with you not to brag on us like we're doing something special, but just to encourage you, if anyone out there feels like God is burdening them to start living loud for him. Yeah. I believe today's a great day to start. <laughs> and so that's kind of what this song's about. This is a song we wrote called Names and Labels. And it's just a song uh, just about a lot of the different names we were called by other people when we made that step of faith to say, Jesus, we're all for you. So hope you enjoy it. This is Names and Labels. Freak, 
vigorous and radical. His faith is a grudge that he just holds on to. Basically weak, a little fanatical. So out of touch, thinks that he's better than you. And just another way to say I'm crazy. And just another way to say you're scared. Go on ahead, try to live with me. But this truth I found, it's not going anywhere. You better watch out, the same a little delusional. I just might start screaming the name of Jesus when I speak. They say I'm irrational, too heavenly minded to be any earthly good. It's just another way to say I'm crazy. It's just another way to say you're scared. Go on ahead, try to live with me. But this truth I found, it's not going anywhere. Can anybody relate? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey, well, we're going to share just one more song, and then we're going to dig into God's Word. But I'm going to let Allegra just share a little bit about this next song because we've got quite a testimony that goes with it. Yes. This little angel in my backpack right here is our second born. She's 15 months. Her name is Saber. We see her as a sword of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> so she's, she's our second weapon. Our first weapon is our arrow. Um, he's three and a half tomorrow, actually. But anyway, um, he's right. This does come with quite a testimony. Our lives changed so quickly within the blink of an eye, as it is said. On Travis's birthday, 1.15 a.m., our saber emerged, and um, we wanted to be surprised, so we didn't find out if it was a boy or girl. So it was, boy or girl? <gasps> what is that? It was just, it was this beautiful moment that just was eclipsed in horror. She had an enormous mass on the left side of her neck. It was about one third the size of her head. Um, they quickly took a look at her, ran some tests. It was diagnosed as a congenital hemangioma, which basically means she was born with an extremely swollen artery. And it was connected to one of the occipitals, which happens to be one of the main arteries. Um, they assured us it was benign. They sent us home and that it should start to heal itself. And um, we kept watch on it, and day 20 of her life, we decided we were going to take Saber out for the first time in our double jogging stroller that we just purchased, and we put both Arrow and Saber in. And um, as Travis went to retrieve Saber from her car seat, um, it looked like she had been shot. There was blood everywhere. What had happened was, as the days were coming up to this day, she had started forming kind of a, a scab. The actual mass changed, and it began to look like it was caving in on itself. And underneath it all, she was actually, if you had taken the scab off, there was a big hole in her head, and the artery was wide open. So any time, you know, as God desi designs us to heal ourselves, uh, we have a scab, it peels off, we have scar tissue, we're fine. Well, not in this case with this mass. As soon as she began to start to heal herself, 
um, the artery had full exposure. So we had lots and lots and lots of, um, of blood flow. She was hemorrhaging quite fiercely. And we could see this is way above us, so we immediately rushed her to our local little hospital, and they don't do children. But that day, that was miracle number one. They were able to actually stabilize her body. We learned that she lost two-thirds of her life's blood in about 10 minutes. And that was with heavy compression in seconds after we saw this. It turns out the car seat was holding compression on her head. And um, so this pretty much, it, it, it freaked us out pretty good. We got up to our local children's hospital. They were able to do a blood transfusion on her. That was life for two and a half months. Um, she started having those episodes constantly, uh, about twice a week. And each time she did that, that little scab that was about the size of a dime became bigger and bigger and bigger because when you have a scab and you pick it, it gets bigger. So by the end of it all, she had, by the end of two months, she, you could stack five quarters right in a row on this scab. So any time that scab would open up, that artery had full reign to just go crazy. But um, I, I want to testify really quickly about this. I became a very, very weary mommy. <laughs> My legs were going to buckle. <laughs> and um, this particular bleed that we had had, she had two major ones, one the night before for about five hours, and then this particular one was 17 hours. My faithful husband was holding compression on her little head in the second emergency room that night. And um, I needed to excuse myself to, for like an 18-second restroom break. And, I mean, nothing could keep me from getting back from them. But the Lord stopped me in my tracks. I was two paces from that door, and, and I, I, I just stopped. Like I said, nothing could stop me. It was the Lord, and he spoke to me very clearly to my spirit. It was, Allegra, she doesn't belong to you. She belongs to me, <laughs> and I love her more than you do because I loved her first. And it just, it really struck me very clear because in those very moments as I was processing that, I was able to stand up on these knees that were going to buckle. I was standing up straighter. God, she belongs to you. In those moments, I marched myself back in that room. I, was, I had my shoulders back. I said, honey, we need to give her back to the Lord. She belongs to him. I've been trying to carry this burden, and I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't know who's going to go first, her or me. And, um, and so right then and there in that emergency room, we prayed. As he held compression, we prayed over our daughter, and we gave her back to the Lord. And um, that's my testimony to you. Not once did he promise that he was going to allow her to live that night. She could have gone at any time. He didn't promise us two more minutes with her. So in those moments when we gave her back, we truly had the heart of surrender. We let go. We let go of her, and we let him and in those moments, I have to tell you that when you're in the eye of a storm and you can't see outside your circumstance, it's really scary. <laughs> it's, it's very scary. But you know what? We're not the only ones who, who have gone through something like this. We all have storms in our life, especially if you're walking with the Lord. You're going to have trials. Amen? It doesn't get easier, but he walks through it with us. And in those moments, we could now step outside of that storm and look in and say, this is a season, Lord. This is a season, but you know what? I can see clearly now because <laughs> you're bigger and you're mightier and you're a sovereign God. So I'm just going to praise you because you're God. And so in those moments, we were freed of this burden. Of course, we wanted her to live. Of course, we were begging God. But in those moments, we trusted him. We trusted him like no other. And we let her go. And in those moments, she survived, obviously. We celebrated her first birthday on his birthday, November 30th, praise God. And I stand before you, yes, give God praise. I stand before you with a healed little girl. Praise be unto God. <laughs> I never would have dreamed we would have had this much time with her. But we began to praise him no matter what. Because if he decided to take her that, that night, it had to be well with our souls. Because he's God. So, anyway, I hope that really ministers you. I hope that encourages you. It edifies you today. You know, Allegra, as you were testifying, my heart was touched. And I believe that there's a lot of people here today that need to let go 
of something in their life and maybe even come to the Lord. So would you mind if we prayed for some people that, and y'all could keep um, playing? But who in here needs the Lord in their life? Would you just raise your hand quickly all over this place? You just now see you all over. And how many of you have a situation, a kid or a situation you need to surrender to God? And how many of you know God will probably do better than you'll do with that thing? And, and you just need to surrender. If that's you, would you just get out of your seat? They're going to uh, play and just come to the altar. And as you get out of your seat, God's going to do a miracle in your heart and in your life and in your situation or whatever you're, you're going through. From all over this place, just line up. Um, Pastor Eric, if you just help me get that out of the way. And we're home. This is family. So just uh, make yourself at home. Just come from all over this place and surrender to the Lord. When your best friend looks at his watch and leaves now. You know you've talked too long when you break down You act like you're fine but you're screaming on the inside Sometimes I don't know how to feel But it doesn't make it any less real I don't know how I respond if there's a bad that is suddenly gone Can anyone relate When the words get expressed How you feel inside Can anyone relate To me Or is it simply understood And everything falls apart You're there to catch me when I fall away Lord, I want you to know With every motive of my heart I will declare that you're mine God, even though I don't have a word to say, oh, this simply understood. Like the beloved, always clings into the lather in the action of a life. Lasts forever like a rain cloud. Always comes before the shower. The sky tells a story. There's no need to check the weather. Sometimes I don't know how to feel. When circumstance catch you off guard, leaves you stuck in some hot. I don't know how I respond. If there's a bad that is suddenly gone Can anyone relate When the words get expressed How you feel inside Can anyone relate To me Or is it simply understood When everything falls apart You're there to catch me when I fall away Lord, I want you to know With every motive of my heart I wear the glare but you're mine Simply understood. Allegra, I wonder if you would pray for all of us here. 
in um, a couple of prayers. There are people that are just now making Jesus Lord of their life. There are people that are coming back home to God right now. That God is calling them to a higher place. And they're, re, they're recommitting their heart and their life to the Lord. And then there are some that have situations that they've been holding on to that has kept God from moving. Because they've been in the way. And they got to give their baby to God. Father... <laughs> Abba, Father, Lord, we, we come before you right now, God. God, we thank you for who you are and for all that you've done for us, Father. God, I just pray that your, your open arms would be ever so apparent right now, God, to these people, Father, your people, these, these precious ones that you've created in their mother's wombs, Father. You tell us, God, that you know the plans that you have for us, plans to prosper and not to harm us, God, to give us a hope and a future, Father. But that's conditional, Lord. If we trust in you, that plan can unfold. If we give our lives to you, if we surrender to you, Father, then you have free reign in our lives, God. So I want to pray over all of these precious souls, God, the ones that you love so much, which is everyone in this room, God. Specifically, I want to lift up these people to you, Father. Some of them are hurting, God. They need to know that they need to know you're their Savior, Father. They need to know that, that they're protected. They need to know you're the answer, God. So I pray, I pray that you would move in such a mighty way, God. I pray for those, Father, who haven't made the decision to follow you just yet, God. I pray that people would come into their lives to encourage them, Father. I pray for the church to be the church. I pray for us to use that as an example, God. I pray for us to shine for you. Father, move in their hearts, move in their spirits, beckon them to you this day, God. I pray that they would hear your voice, God. Call them, Lord. Call them to you. Beckon them to you, Father. I pray that as the enemy tries to stir things up, God, that you would thwart all plans. You would put your heads around them, God. You would speak life into these people, God. The truth of your word. You are love. You are peace. You are joy. You are justice. Father, you are everything. And until we surrender that, God, we do bear the burdens of this world by ourselves. And we can't do it. We can't do it without you, Father. So I want to pray for those. That you, that you are just opening your arms to right now, Father. For those who haven't made that decision, Father, that you would be on their spirits in a heavy way, Father. Move in their hearts. Pray for those people to let go. God, I want to lift up those who have given their lives to you, Father, but have kind of been like the prodigal. They have turned their backs on you, Father. God, I want to pray specifically over them right now. Lord, that they would hear the truth and that they would... They would, with that accountability line, Father, be, be brought back in love. Just as that prodigal son came back and the father put a robe on him and celebrated, had a feast for him. All encouragement, God. Your love would go out to them, Father, that there would be no shame, but full repentance, Father, that they would truly repent. They would turn from their ways and humble themselves this day, God to be brought back into your hand, Father. So I pray for true repentance today, God, because that's what it takes. It takes a turn from our wicked ways and to humble ourselves, Father, humble them. So I pray that in those people, Father. We come from many different experiences, many different walks of life, God, but you are mightier and you are bigger than any crisis, than any mountain in our life, God. You are God. So I wanna pray for those, God. I want to pray for those who are walking with you too, Father, that they would not become stagnant, that they would not be the lukewarm church, Father. Lord, that they would have a passion and a stir, Father. Humble them too. Humble us, Lord. Humble us, Father. Help us to look up for the answer, and that is Jesus. God, you loved us so much that you sent your son to die for us. You gave up your son for people 
who ridiculed and mocked, spit in your face, God. And you loved us so much that this has been your plan. So, Father, I pray that these people would feel that love, feel that <laughs> that peace, that joy, Father, <laughs> that, that intenseness of your love that you have for us. Father, you see us as your bride when we come in to know you. Help us, Father. Help us to become that spotless bride that you are so happy to come and get. Father, we love you so much. And I just pray your provision, your, your hedge of protection on these people, like I said, Father. Help people to pour in their lives. Father, I pray for your word. I pray for Travis as he's about to convey your word to them, Father, that your spirit and truth, Father, will go forth in a mighty way, God. Move in their hearts. Let them hear your word, Father. And Isaiah, you tell us your arm is not too short and your ear is not too dull to save. You are mighty to save God. So I pray that they would make that decision to become your children forever, Father. That eternal decision. And they wouldn't tarry in making it, Father. And they would count the cost before they make it. Father, that they would humble themselves to you. Repent from wicked ways, God. So that you can move in a mighty way, Father. These temples want to be filled with you today. Not with the junk of the world, Father. So I pray that they would empty themselves out and invite you in today, God. Lord, I want to call them my brothers and sisters in Christ. Help them make that decision, Father. Help them not to tarry. Lord, I want to commit them unto you this day. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just wait, just mm -hmm. right, just wait yes. just a second. Your eyes are closed right now. Just close your eyes one more time. The Spirit of God is speaking to your heart right now. Who will say today in all seriousness, God be my witness. I'm giving my life to Christ I'm turning from the old ways and I'm going to turn to the new. I'm going to serve God with my heart. No, no games, no putting on no mask or nothing, but God's dealing with your heart right now. And this is a real change in your life. You really want God to change you. You really want God to live through you. If that's you, would you just raise your hand? Just raise your hand. Because today you will never be the same again. When you walk out of this place, it's a new season for you. This is a new day for you. What you've been striving for and looking for, God is doing right this second in your lives. So here's what God's doing. He's receiving backsliders today, people that have not, are not where they need to be. They've not been living like they need to live, and they know. And God's dealing with your heart right now to take you to another level in Him. Some have committed their heart to Christ for the very first time, and we celebrate that new commitment to you. We want to see you get water baptized, too. Make sure you bring all your family, because... We want all the family members to witness you being water baptized for the Lord because it signifies a change, a resurrected life, a new life that you're now going to live. So, Lord, right now, will you pray with me as you get ready to sit down? Just say, Lord, I surrender my heart and my life. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come live in me all the days of my life. I need help. Holy Ghost, help. I need lots of help. Come on, give the Lord a great big shout. As you get ready to sit down, come on. Thank you, Lord. 
All right, brother, you got about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do a scripture real quick? Sure. Is that all right? And if they want, if they want to get you word, I have to come to Dental Springs. How about that? Um, John, quickly, why don't you throw up Psalms chapter forty, verse one through uh, five, real quick? And I just want to talk to you just for a second. Um, how about you invite somebody to preach, and then you don't let him preach? Ain't that crazy? <laughs> Are y'all alive in this place? All right. All right. How many of you love just following the Lord and letting, uh, how many of you believe that God can do more preaching in a pig pen than we could, all right, see, how many of you know if you don't listen to the preacher, you might have to get the pig pen minute, some of you got that, <laughs> how many of you don't want the pig pen to minister to you, all right, here we go, the Bible says I waited what, uh, are y'all, so I waited patiently on who? On the Lord, and he did what? He inclined his ear unto me, and what did he do? He heard my cry. He heard my prayer. So what happens when we wait for God to do it? That, that's that's the, the whole message. You, you, you got it? You got it? I got God's word. <laughs> Right. It's twelve thirty, brother. We we. So I need to be done at twelve thirty. So yeah, okay, yeah. So done. yeah, so you're done. I love you. <laughs> I bless you. <laughs> All right. We've already ministered to them. We got Amen. a couple of scriptures. Amen. We're gonna give those. We're gonna give them sheep Amen. a couple of uh, little nuggets. You okay. know, chicken nuggets from, like McDonald's, and we're gonna let them go. I like Bible. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he says Bible nuggets. All right. Hey, hey, come on, give God glory in this place. <laughs> All right, so you cried out to God because you've waited on him. Now God has heard your cries. Shout somebody. God's listening. God is, is there for you. And then he does something supernatural. He reaches down. Uh, he brought you up also out of a what? A horrible pit. Listen, I don't know what kind of pit you're in today, baby. I don't know what's going on in your life. But I'm telling you this right now. If you've got a relationship with God, God will reach down into that horrible pit of sin. And he'll calipole you up and out. He'll set your feet upon a solid rock called Jesus. And then he'll put a new song in your mouth, a song of praise for our God. Give him glory and stand to your feet today. <laughs> Father, I lift up all of our people as we send them out this week, God, on a mission for you. We pray, God, there'll be a light. Everywhere they go, people will see Jesus in them, Father God, that you will use them mightily. Those that have made commitments to you and have surrendered to you. Now, God, help them, Lord, to be all that you've called and created them to be. Now, God, we bless your people right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Give God glory in this place. Have a great, great day. We love you. Actually, yes. just over the years. But she can't stand to go in the welcome center.